Hey there groovy dudes and dudettes, this is Stomper Be Thompin and in this video I'm going to give an owner review on the 2021 Honda CRF 250F. So in this review, I want to talk about why I chose this bike. I'm going to go over some of the more common highlights that you see from the professional reviewers out there. I'm going to speak to my experience with it so far. I'm going to show plenty of shots of it in action here in the, in the woods. Um, I'm going to quickly cover some of my personal likes and dislikes that I've determined so far. I've only had the bike about a month. And uh, I will also speak to and give a close-up shot of all the aftermarket parts that I've put on it thus far. Um, so all the specifications for the Honda are in the description below. I'm not really going to cover that. And then all of I'll try and get as many links as I possibly can for all the aftermarket parts. Uh, and put those right beneath that in the description below. I don't have any affiliation with these companies whatsoever, but um, you know, if you like something, you can go get it for yourself and install it pretty easily. So my video here is not intended to tell you that, hey, this bike is the bee's knees and it's, it's totally going to fit your riding style perfectly. I want to tell you a little bit about how, how I ride, how I intend to ride. Um, I think Environment and terrain is a huge factor into making a bike purchase. If I lived out west, I probably would have gotten a different bike, more of like a desert enduro type bike, 250RX or the 250X, whatever they're calling it. Maybe Kawasaki's 250X that just came out. That's a really great looking bike. All I want to do is, is explain this bike a little bit better, show it in action, and uh, maybe that will help you make your determination on if it's, on if it's right for you. For reference, I'm six feet tall, about 200 pounds. This bike is 100% stock, except for aftermarket bolt-on parts. So, uh, yeah. At the end of the video, uh, I'll say this again, but if you got any specific questions about the bike, how it rides, specifications, uh, I'll do my best to answer them. I'm not a pro rider whatsoever. I'm still learning quite a bit. So yeah, here's the rest of the video, thanks. Slick down there, we'll see. Woo! So, there were a few primary reasons that swayed me to purchase this bike. I wanted one brand new, and the price was right. It was about 4600 4700 MSRP, so that's not too bad. The race bikes are a lot more expensive, but yes, you get a lot more bike to go along with it. Um, the second reason was I had to be honest about my abilities and my riding style. I'm here on the East Coast. The trails are tight and there are a lot of trees. The dirt is really tacky. So it's unlikely I'm ever going to be going 40 miles per hour through whoops where I would really bottom out the suspension with ease. Also, I'm not entirely sure yet if I'm going to enter any hair scrambles or like sprint enduros. Those sound like a lot of fun, but... Yeah, we'll we'll see. I do got a I do got a job I gotta do, right? Uh, and lastly, it would be like Honda reliability and parts. This is an air cooled engine. It's got a lot 
not a lot lower, but it's got lower compression than those race bike four strokes. I don't even think that a top end rebuild is in the owner's manual in the maintenance chart. This thing should be pretty bulletproof and easy and cheap to care for. That was certainly a pro. Uh, and then lastly, the, the resale value. Getting, getting something like a Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, uh, something that's a simple trail bike that's extremely approachable by a lot of different riders. Well, should I ever decide to sell it, that'll open up a lot of doors there. Okay, so here's a quick little rundown of some of the highlights that most of the professional reviews are gonna are gonna touch on in every single one of them out there i want to quickly cover them and provide my very quick opinions of them uh don't worry the bike is not this short i am standing uphill and it is sitting downhill for me so uh so every review out there is gonna touch on the price like i said 4700 bucks that is praised by just about everybody it's very approachable from a financial standpoint Every single review is going to praise the electric start and the electronic fuel injection. I personally absolutely love them. I am not anti-carburetor whatsoever, um, especially putting on electron carb on, on some of them two strokes or like a carbureted bikes just fine in my opinion. And I don't mind kicking these lower compression bikes. That's fine too, but it's just nice to have, especially for my riding style. Suspension. Every review acknowledges that the suspension is soft and non-adjustable. In the front, it's not adjustable whatsoever. In the rear, you get preload adjustment only. The ones that don't acknowledge the soft sus suspension simply bash the soft suspension. So if you're riding hard and you know you're going to be doing some, some jumps, even on natural terrain, some bigger jumps out there, or if you're going to be hitting whoops, Suspension is something you're seriously going to have to consider being one of the, the major limitations for you on this bike. So weight, all the reviewers uh, penalize this thing for the weight. Uh, it's right around like 263, 265 pounds wet with a full tank of gas. Um, I will say that I don't mind it at all. It doesn't seem to be an issue. If you, like, if they were to design the bike to be 20 to 30 pounds lighter, well, it's probably gonna be two or three grand more because that takes a lot of engineering to get it to that point. Uh, additionally, they all these reviews comment that it carries the weight really low. And I will agree with that. Uh, but if you are on a hill climb and it's pretty, pretty treacherous and all of a sudden you have to put your feet down because the bike's falling, well, it's, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> I've had that happen once so far, so. I don't mind it at all. It's nothing that I can't handle, but if you are smaller or if you uh, have some like injuries that have permanent damage, uh, that's something to consider. Picking this thing up is not easy, but what is picking up 260 pounds versus 230 pounds? Is it really that much of a difference? Let's see, braking. The braking is highly complemented by all these reviews. You get a two piston disc in the front, and you get a single piston disc in the rear. That disc in the rear is an upgrade from the drum brake from the previous uh, to CRF 230F, which they stopped building in 2019, or that was the last year it ran. Uh, the five-speed transmission. This is kind of uh, hit or miss. I think most reviews out there are going to complement it. So they dropped a cog from the CRF 230F down from six to five but the gear ratio is still pretty wide. I think the bike tops out at about 
like 68, 70 miles per hour, give or take, just based on like the gearing. It can probably go a lot faster than that if you change up your sprockets and stuff. Um, yeah, so the, the transmission is praised. It's not gonna lug real low like a, like a big two stroke, but it's a really good setup for trail riding, especially on the East Coast. Let's see here, just a couple more things. Maintenance and reliability. Every review mentions that it should be a very reliable bike and it should be very cheap and easy to maintain. And then I, I would say one of the last things that they all touch on is that it really does work well for how the engineers designed it and the, the target audience that they were aiming for. Um, like me, I'm like beginner intermediate, I assume by the end of 2021, if I can stay on the trails as much as possible, I should be up to that intermediate level, no problem. But I don't imagine I'm going to run out of bike. It's a, it's a great bike for any beginner, but an intermediate rider is going to have lots of fun on it too. So I'll probably keep this thing for a really long time, even if I potentially get a second bike down the road. Who knows? super skilled too but to jump right into an immediate berm on a downhill that was a pricker bush so I'll quickly touch on my experience with the bike so far it was extremely simple to get used to straight away even if it even in its completely stock form I will say that um, in the bike's stock form, you don't need to change anything. You can immediately go hit the trails and have tons of fun. If you were to change one single thing, perhaps consider changing out that plastic skid plate, which I'll talk more about later, with a, with a metal skid plate of some kind. On the East Coast, lots of branches, lots of uh, hidden logs, hidden rocks and stuff. That's a risk I'm not willing to take. Um, yeah. This bike really matches my riding style. Uh, I'm still getting used to um, like extremely slow situations where you gotta constantly like feather the clutch in first gear when you're navigating like an off camber hill climb or something through the rocks. So uh, that's that's more of like a skill thing I'm working on rather than a, a limitation of the bike. But it do, when I do it right, it works very smoothly. This clutch is is very easy to feather so far. But yeah. My experience with it so far has been great. Check in later for like a one year review. We'll see if that changes at all.
Okay, so I realize I am starting to sound a little bit redundant here, but I want to quickly cover some of my personal likes and dislikes about the bike so far. It has electric start. You have a keyed ignition, which I will give you a close-up of when I show all the aftermarket parts on here. And then you also have the push-button electric start. I love it. It's just a convenience thing for me. I don't really miss kicking, um, but it also has a, uh, it's got a kill switch over here for you on top of that. And it's electronically fuel injected. I think it's got a 32 millimeter throttle body. Um, something to consider. I don't know for certain, but with this fuel injection system, it's not like it's always accounting for air fuel mixture and like altitude and uh, back pressure and all that stuff. So if you were to do a slip on exhaust or like a full headers all the way back, uh, exhaust system you would likely have to still retune the thing so it's not going to uh, the ECU is in here in here isn't going to take care of all the tuning for you um, uh, like a like a better setup e EFI system Let's see here I love the kickstand having a kickstand is nice I wish um, in its upright I'll, I'll show you close up later in its upright position though it's just horizontal with the swing arm kind of uh, I wish it kind of went all the way up like on some other bikes out there. Not a big deal. The kickstand kick has been no issue whatsoever so far. Somebody shooting. A lot. Uh, lastly, uh, lastly, uh, real quick on the ignition switch here. Um, it's got the key, so you can take it out. The Kawasaki's, for whatever reason, don't have a key at all. They've got a button you press to turn on the ignition, and then you have your start button. So, literally anybody can walk up and steal the thing. I mean, this is pretty easy to steal as well, I suppose, but at least having a key in here gives you a little bit more peace of mind if you're going to park it somewhere, run inside and grab something real quick. Like if you're cruising the Hatfield McCoy trails and you're going to grab lunch, you take your key with you rather than anybody being able to walk up and, and start the bike and walk away with it. Dislikes, weight. Like I said before, she's a bit heavy. I don't really mind it whatsoever. But it is, you know, lighter is always better, right? Uh, I wish it came with a headlight and tail light. I've got an aftermarket set up on here that works really well, but a stock headlight and tail light would have been nice to have. Um, yeah, the stock skid plate is plastic and it doesn't even cover, cover the engine oil drain bolt. And as of 2021, it's March right now, the aftermarket support for this thing is a little bit lacking. There's like one or two other uh, like um, foot pegs for it, but I think the cheapest pair is like 160 bucks, something like that. So you're, unless you want to spend $160, you're stuck with the stock skid plates. The CRF 230F, previous bike to this had a little bit more aftermarket support out there so I'm hoping that some other companies out there start to make more products for this bike things like brake levers and shift levers and instead of having to rely on the Honda product only for, the, for those kind of replacements so maybe with uh, coronavirus completely behind us um, that picks up a little bit that would be great but that's it for likes and dislikes I'll try to show you this in third person. Steep downhill, I'm gonna try to stand it up. Ground's nice and dry.
then bounced up on me. And I wasn't in proper standing position. All right, I'll get straight into the aftermarket parts I have on this bike so far, but quickly as promised, here's the ignition. When you turn it on, the gas light comes on for a second, and then it goes off. Obviously that uh, low fuel light will, will pop on whenever you have low fuel. I think it's at 0.34 gallons, and this is a 1.6 gallon tank. Uh, last thing I promised to show you here, here's the kickstand. It just kind of rests up here next to the swing arm. I wish it came up a little bit higher, but that ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Okay, so starting with the handlebars. Uh, the stock handlebars really are pretty fine, but they're steel, you know, and some of that cheaper steel can bend real easy. I have the uh, Pro Taper 7 8 with the CR mid bend. So these are lighter, stronger. They're a hair wider by about like maybe half inch, three quarter inch. And um, yeah, pretty straightforward. I went with the Pro Taper pillow top grips. I really like those so far. Nothing too uh, exciting with the grips. I would say that the CR mid bend though is pretty darn close to stock. I did some um, rough measurements with it. So next on here, I have the Thumper Jockey Enduro 3000 light kit. It does come with two of these pods. Each one spits out about 1500 watts of light and it is in a spot pattern. I've got a full video on this entire kit and installation on a KLX 140, but uh, I'll just quickly cover it here. Um, I did not light up or I did not install the other light pod. Instead, I wired up the Tusk uh, rear brake light. So that's that rear brake light. It is actually extremely bright. Uh, it's an LED light and um, I wired it up into the Thumper Jockey light kit. I did not, however, a wire in a brake light switch at all so it's it's simply a tail light no brake light but at least it's something for uh for night riding which i do like to do so next is the Acherby's wraparound hand guards this is like one of the cheaper sets that's on rocky mountain atv uh, my brother's got a set of these on his bike i've got a set on mine they've been great to me so far i think i've only uh gently let her down once <sighs> these plastics can break pretty easy from what I hear but again I've had no issues whatsoever so happy with those would totally buy them again uh, the tusk I didn't bring them with me I got the tusk front fender tube bag um, so that's supposed to mount right here but um, I just didn't bring that with me didn't need it today here's one of the most important aftermarket products that I've got on here the ricochet off-road skid plate I put these on my ATVs I really love this company's products this thing offers way more protection. Underneath there, way more protection than the stock one. You can see here, it goes back all the way to this cross member where you're near where your pegs mount up, and it actually covers the drain hole bolt. They did, they do have a, a hole there, so you can still access your engine oil drain drain bolt, no problem. But it offers way more protection than the stock plate. It also offers uh, protection up here on your case, right? So that's this is where your oil, fil oil filter sits. That's got another wing over here for your clutch and everything. Clutch plates. So 
So that was approximately $100, $115, and it's worth every single penny. Um, underneath that, I have what's called the Tusk Universal Linkage Guard. So I couldn't find a skid plate that extended back and, and protects your lower linkage here. But uh, this one is a, oh, I forget the type of plastic. It's that special kind of plastic that, I'll, I'll, I'll put it right here, that um, that all the, the, the common plastic skid plates are made out of. It's extremely durable, extremely tough. This thing is a universal fit. You kind of cut it to fit your own bike. It bolts into whatever skid plate you've put it on. So two bolts up there, really simple, pretty flush mounted. It comes with these little foam things so it doesn't make a ton of noise. And there's just a little bit of extra protection on your lower linkage there. Um, and for S and G, I put on this uh, Works Connection brake caliper guard. The bike does come with the plastic one, but I kind of go crazy with skid plates and protection. I would, if I had a rear rotor, guard I would have that but they don't make it if I had lower fork guards I'd buy those if they had a front rotor guard that fits this I would buy it but they don't make those so really that's it for the uh for the aftermarket price parts I have on it single ride I do I get exponentially better um, it's likely because I'm in that beginner phase where you excel so much until you reach your kind of plateau point kind of like a weightlifter most of your gains are in that first three to six months um, I'm getting better and better and better each ride uh, as you can see a few times got to get better at brake modulation and balance and stuff and a little bit of that clutch control but i can see me growing into this bike out here and really pushing it to its limits um kind of pushing me to my limits too again if i lived out west i would absolutely purchase one of the race bikes that's uh been built for the trail like the 250 rx or whatever they're calling it the 250x Kawasaki 250X, their, their motocross bike that they've tweaked for like desert racing and stuff like that. You get a little bit more suspension travel, you get a little bit more power, and um, but out here for these woods, for my riding style, I'm never going to race motocross. I'm probably not going to hit too many big jumps. I'm still learning how to jump, so I'm still, still learning how to wheelie. And like get that back tire up and over obstacles and stuff like that so is it the right bike for you well if you're like me then probably thanks for watching everybody <laughs>